and I think that you know it's probably a good thing in the long run. But there's a lot of instructors out there that haven't got their grasp on how to teach disabled. I mean, you just run into anything. But there is a group out there, Dave Lee's group, who does the disability yeah. martial art, and he's doing lots and lots of uh, interesting work, even down to wheelchairs. That if you're blocking and you've got one of those fold down wheelchairs with a pivot, yeah. that wears the pivot out. You do that a few hundred times, and the yeah. blooming thing collapses. So the information is out there, and it's getting bigger and better all the time. And I think um, you know people do need to be aware that. It, from, from the point of view of, of, of teaching disabled, especially children, I find it um, very rewarding because, generally speaking, they're excluded in some way, shape or form from football or any other sport that maybe is, is what a, a kid of their age would be, would be wanting to do. Um, and uh, I find that um, I, you always get asked the question of, you know, Dave's got this problem, he's in a wheelchair or he can't move this side. Can he do martial arts? Well, of course he can. There's, there's no reason that he shouldn't be able to do it. We might have to modify a pattern so that he could, uh, you know, uh, instead of doing a kick, can show the kick or describe a kick or, or something like that. But there, is, there, there shouldn't be any barrier to a, to a disabled person doing martial arts. Well, I, I know Dave, uh, Dave Lee has had a lot of problems with different political uh, animals. Everybody wants to seem to say, yeah, we're with the D DSM allergies. Do this, but they're actually, in fact, they're not. I mean, everybody's tried to jump in on the bandwagon with it, but not many people actually do and help. And I think that's, uh, I mean, I try and do what I can and, and bring him involved, involve him in everything yeah. that we do because I think he's an important part of the, uh, you know, information that people need. Um, but I think the fundamental thing with it is that you can use his logo and show that you actively are involved yeah. with uh, a disability martial arts group because a lot of the disability. Disabled people, or people who are disabled, don't like the word disabled yeah. because they do work. Disabled, when something's yeah. disabled, they see it as not working. And I think that they prefer to say, or prefer everybody to say, well, look, it's a person with a disability as opposed to disabled. If you disable a toilet, it doesn't work. And yeah. as far as I'm not saying that the toilets, that's not what I'm saying. But uh, yeah, at the end of the day, people with disabilities. Uh, and I think that's uh, a lot of people are very sensitive over those issues. <laughs> What? <laughs> <laughs> Should I tell us a story about so when Kung Fu Panda came to London? That's an interesting story, and I think it's a good time for it as well. <laughs> Make sure it's not. It was a toilet party. It was a toilet That wasn't a good analogy. <laughs> that wasn't really nice. No, that was not. <laughs> when I said it, you know, you know, I just, I just kind of put no, no, no. Shush. There's this. <laughs> no, I thought you knew it. I thought you knew it. <laughs> you tell it then. All right. Well, Kung, yeah, Kung Fu Panda came to London on holiday, walking around Soho, just bumps into these prostitutes. So, the prostitute offers her services to Kung Fu Panda. So, Panda, being completely oblivious to London and culture and everything, says, "Yeah, okay, sure." So, they go around, they have a lovely meal, go back to uh, the, the girl's place, they do the business. End of the night. Prostitute says, "Okay, Panda, it's time to pay." And says, "Pay? What do you mean, pay?" So, prostitute takes her dictionary, looks at her dictionary. Prostitute, the lady that shows you good time, you have to pay her. Blah blah blah. Panda goes, "Ah!" Looks under Panda. It says, "Panda eats, shoots, and leaves." <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's time for it, so. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, surely you've got a few up your sleeve. Oh, dear. You've got the powders. The, uh, what we're doing now is we go into, again, importance again of media. I think... Oh, I'm not kidding. <laughs> <laughs> sure, uh, this is so the longest I've been serious. <laughs> Confucius, I think we should discuss Confucius. Yes. Since Confucius. we're in a martial arts sort of yeah. environment. Confucius, they're flowers, aren't they? Little tiny droopy things. Oh no, they're Confucius. <laughs> well, Confucius said, a man who run behind bus gets exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> Confucius said, man who goes through a door sideways. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's a fat kid. <laughs> 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 no, Confucius says, man, holding a pocket, feeling cocky. <laughs> oh, 
Back to the series then. Anyway, yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah, that's what Fuchsia you says. The man who goes through a sore sideways, <coughs> door sideways, is in Bangkok. <laughs> Do you remember that thought? Who had to sit here? Caught in the lift by Oliver Biggin. Confucius said, the man who goes to bed with stiff problem, wake up with solution in hand. Who wrote that? George Bible. Oh, it's getting worse. It's getting worse. It's getting worse. It's getting worse. I've been very good sitting here, haven't I? I've been very good sitting here, haven't I? Surrounded by it, and I'm resisting the urge to... <laughs> it didn't take about half an hour ago. Yeah, no, I just realised that the red light was still on that side.